Did you know that PRE Record stands for Piss Run Emergency? I never knew that. And hello and welcome to Curse Mojo. And today we're gonna go into Law Cow Live. All right. Hey everybody, welcome to the Law Cow Podcast. I'm here with none other than Boogie Two Nine Nine Eight Eight and the Wings of Rege- uh, Redemption. How are you? How are you guys? Wings of Rejection. I got you. It is one of my favorite podcasts to listen to. Well, it's also the only podcast I listen to. Did that Cinema Snob Midnight Screen count? The podcast is about has been law cows talking about the drama of the internet. And sometimes aliens for some freaking reason. Which actually became a reality thanks to Killer Keemstar. I had a dream of getting DSP, Wings of Redemption, and Boogie2988 on a podcast. The Low Cow Podcast. The entire internet loved this idea. After the height of the boxing match between Wings and Boogie, the two decided to be a part of the podcast. However, DSP did not go through with it, being the wet blanket throughout the whole thing. Because the Lao Cow meme is not positive. It's a, tr- it's a disgusting, trollish thing to say about someone. It's fucked up. It doesn't matter if you try to turn it into a positive so people will give you money for it. It's still an insult. I'm not adopting an insanely toxic title because someone thinks that if you do that, you can make more money. I'm not doing that. He should have done it. He would have made a lot of money. So instead, the third slide was given some guy in the commentary community, Tommy C. Who really isn't a law cow, as his reputation is a lot more positive compared to the other two. Like sure, he's fat, loud, and obnoxious, but he doesn't really fit the law cow stereotype. And part of an original idea that didn't pan out. It's actually all very forced. Well, well you, I, I don't think you have the trauma me and Boogie have, though. Like, oh, just, stop doing that. I don't give a shit. I, I know you. It feels like there could have been better choices. And that's what this video is going to be about. So, what other cringe figures could be a better fit for Law Cow Live? In this episode of Curse Mojo, we'll be taking a look at some of the different Law Cows that would be the perfect host for Law Cow Live. There is no general rule other than, well, they can't be a criminal. Well, I mean, I guess they could be a criminal, they just can't be like a predator or something like that. I, I don't think Keemstar will want someone like that on payroll. So, no EDP or Cyrax. Well, I was actually coming out here to pick up a cupcake <laughs> and then go back home. Number 10, Ethan Ralph. I'm gonna jack off on your fucking casket, you cocksucking son of a bitch. And you ain't gonna be able to do shit about it. Now, Ethan Rouse does fit the show, and is in fact a smaller antagonistic force throughout the series, constantly shit-talking Boogie and Wings any chance he gets. Uh, oh, yeah. Because yeah. you didn't want to acknowledge numbers, all the Ralph and Mel's in the Ralph. chat. I would whoop both you fat motherfuckers in the same fucking night. In the same fucking night. I would whoop Ralph you, and then I'll you fuck you your bitch. Right now, but, and then I'll fuck your bitch right in front of you. But is Ralph really a good option? Well, probably not. He's very political, having ties to the alt-right, and he really loves to say the n-word, so much so that it's a detriment to any gross, making him appropriately the lowest in the list. See, the Ralph Amell didn't get into this game. I'm living here in paradise. You know what I'm doing today? You know why the show's gonna be late? Because I'm going out with my 10 out of 10 dime piece Latina girlfriend. Number 9, Amber Lynn Reed. So, with Weight Watchers, it was allowing me to eat very unhealthy. It was allowing me to weasel in a pint of ice cream. Um, I had McDonald's 20 piece nuggets twice in five days. You know what's a recipe to make anything better? Add a woman and make her gay and lame. Well, at least according to modern Hollywood. And Reed absolutely fits into this, as she's a lesbian. And I think most people agree that starting a weight loss channel and gaining double the weight is pretty freaking lame. Whether I was 600 pounds at one point or not, it's very obvious how much I have changed since then. Amberlynn Reed is a different type of law cow. Since most of her focus is on the female side of the lol cow fandom, I guess. You know the saying, boys will be boys? Well, girls will be girls too. Lol cow live could give her a better reality check and in changing reputation she desperately needs. And the main talks about health and weight loss could actually be beneficial towards her. And when Boogie, Ways of Redemption, and freaking Keemstar are good mentors, you know you're fucked. That's the wrong kind of empathy. The right kind of empathy is... What resources can we allocate? What kind of regulations can we put into place to prevent cases like you from happening again? Well, childhood obesity is a real thing in this Mm -hmm. nation, and it's becoming a thing worldwide. Number eight, Narcissa Wright. 
Please support my Patreon, please. Please. I just need another 1500 per month, please. Now, if Amberlynn Reed isn't available to check that box, Narcissa Wright could be a better choice. And does fit in with Wings and Boogie, as being a well-known figure in the video game scene. Similar to the people who hate Boogie and Wings for simply being fat, the same applies to Narcissa. There's no denying that there is at least some transphobia in play, but just like Boogie, sympathy can only go so far. I know I can't get people to love me. I've been spending months trying to get people to love me, and they won't. Well, because people are people, people are individuals, and... I don't have power over individuals, I just have a little bit of influence sometimes. In fact, this dynamic is a win-win for everyone. For Boogie, because they have a similar mental state, and for Wings, because they have a similar reputation with each other. Really, when you think about it, Narcissa is just Wings of Redemption, but trans. And for her, because she might get the boost of her channel, and revive her old fan base. And there's also a win for Keemstar, as he could get Kevils off his back. Speaking of which... Number 7, Tipster. Something that I'm sure a lot of you guys predicted I would talk about today, and oh boy, Tipster had an opinion that made people big mad on the internet. Yeah, I'm not putting Keffels on the list. Instead, we're going to take a look at her biggest supporter. Pun not intended, I actually just realized it after a rewatch. Now, Tipster's reputation is pretty funky, as they were a decent content creator, but slowly lost any goodwill due to his, his defensiveness of Kessels and Vosh. And this new thing he's been doing has given him the wall cow reputation. There you go. So, obviously, we're going to be talking today about Keffels. Keffels is uh, the talk of the town yet again. Now, let's be real. This whole bread tooth thing for him isn't going to last. I will give five months for Keffels to kick him out of the left or something. So, what do you think? Do you think he could be given a second chance? In my opinion, it could be possible. But he might have to do the suck shaker to give his apology more legitimacy. This is me doing the suck shaker. To prove that I am truly sorry and serious about all this. Number six, Papa Gut. Damn, I feel like one day I'm fucking destined to be one of these fucking fat, white, gross YouTubers, dude. Like, walk house. I'm like, I fucking stay up at night. I'm always ready to quit because I just can't become that. I would be devastated to get a real job and stay off the internet. Now, Papa Gut is the most unique exception on this list, because he's not actually a law cow, but is someone who has done content about them, like doing a reaction series on Chris Chan, and also being heavily involved with Daniel Larson. We're not talking about somebody that has high-functioning autism. We're talking about somebody that has what you consider low-functioning autism, um, and schizophrenia, as, as well as other mental health issues. And and because of that, Papa Gut could be the saner voice of reason. Even better, because he's in a similar ballpark health-wise with Wings and Boogie, give or take. The Lol Cow Podcast is coming. Uh, I wish somebody told me. I should be part of it, no? I mean, I am a part of an organized, well, unorganized group of overweight men on the internet that feel the need to assert their opinions on things that nobody asked for. And because of that, I should be part of the podcast. Number five, King Cobra JFS. What is up, fellow YouTubers? It's your boy King Cobra back at it with another video. Well, not into the mainstream YouTube scene like Wings and Boogie, King Cobra is absolutely recognizable in the Walkhouse sphere, more in line with the likes of Chris Chan and Cyrax. And even better, there doesn't seem to be anything overly shady about him either. Just a weird dude being a weird dude. That's what you get for fucking with Cobra, dude. You need to stop touching them kids and drinking olive oil, you sick bastard. Okay, there's some unfortunate encounters with animals, but Wings isn't perfect either. Which totally justifies it, I guess. I'm not sure. Yeah, but like, I got a lot more nasty shit than you do. <laughs> How many cats did you kill growing up? There was a story I left one under a bucket. And I forgot about it. True? Like, like it was like, what? Yeah, it's true. It's true. It's true. Now, was being overweight really a requirement for the show? I don't think so, since his diet and hygiene are just as poor. Though actually having the trio meet up could be very disastrous, considering his cooking habits. You know what this burger needs? More cheese. Now, as of the creation of this video, he has yet to make a guest appearance. But hey, not yet. Yeah, Number Logan. four. Shoe nice. Oh God, he's eating glue! Desi, he's eating glue right now! Shown in a very recent episode of Walkout Live, 
Shoe Knight is a crazy motherfucking bastard, and is probably the most interesting guest they had in a while. We see him eating matches and talking about how much he likes to beat people up. I this has been hit with I've tire been... irons, crowbars, baseball bats, aluminum, and wood. I beat up five cops and did six months in county jail looking at a 5 to 15 sentence, and they had belly clubs. I they... fought 30 people one time. Are you sure you weren't just so drunk that you've seen 30 people? Man, Shoe Knights is the coolest. Sorry, I mean, that's no. way better than pulling a gun on somebody. Do you and it was a very fun watch. So much so that Tommy C was just mentally off. But hey, this isn't about him. And due to Shoe's wacky reputation, he fits perfectly on this list. So here's hoping that if he's not a host, he's a good reoccurring guest. Number 3, Monday Matt. Hey, what's going on, everyone? How you guys doing? Matt Jarbo here, Three Buck Theater. Well, I finally did it. I finally sat down, and I finally embraced my destiny, folks. Now, this one you really have to hear me out on. Monday Matt is one of the original NJHW YouTubers. After a stint of false flagging, it forever ruined his reputation. I, I, I like. Oh. I went down and picked up boulders today, for my front yard. We found a dude in the middle of fucking nowhere who's giving away boulders and went down and got them. So I was out of cell service for a while. Then I had to drive home, unload everything, get dinner. But you're just magically back. here when all this shit breaks out. Like and in a way, he perfectly fits. Being more well known for his fall. And honestly, he was always sort of a contrarian. Spelling off the most frustrating opinions ever, which could make for good content. The thing I know about video production and the internet and everything else is telling me that it is fake. I do not think very little of you, but you must think very fucking little of me to think that I would fake something like this. I am not, it's not that I think little Don't even, of you. I, you shouldn't even be talking about that, Matt. When I when I approach these subjects, when I approach them from multitude, multiple angles, I ask myself every available question that I possibly can. I'm if asking questions. you think I would questions. fake something like that? You shouldn't ask questions like this. Hey, do you fuck your own mother? That's a question I could ask. Number two, DSP. So all I have to say is this. Thank you, you fucking worthless humans, for the views. Look, the original pitch of Law Cow Live has DSP on, and it's impossible not to put him on the list, because that dynamic is perfectly there. He has the right personality, he has the right reputation. I mean, he's practically the silver medal to Christian, I think. Well, I guess Cyrus took that out, but you know what I mean. He is the highest of the lowest. And even more so now, because unlike Boogie, who spent millions of dollars getting laid like a Chad, Phil is going bankrupt over some stupid WWE game. It's just aging even better now. It very well maybe. And he bragged about dumping 800 bucks, this is just in the last 24 hours, on WWE Champions. Where, what do you think of that? How do you spend that kind of money on anything? I mean, you know, I, I, but on a mobile <laughs> game, on a mobile game. On a mobile, at least I got on a mobile game, a pay to win game. Honorable mentions: Keemstar, pretty odd choice because he's a producer. However, to some people, he's a law cow, making it quite appropriate. Rich of Review Tech USA. He gets bundled up with Boogie, Wings, and DSP. Is it because of the hatred for fat people? Yeah, probably. Jalen, imagine all the potential she had as a host. Yeah, I don't think it'll work out. Number one, Dream. Okay, I'm just fucking around. Number one, only use me blade. You know, only use me blade. No. Only use me blade. Only use me blade, man. Yeah. All I do when I play Call of Duty is I got a huge cack and I stab people. So this might be a gray area in the rules here. Only use me blade is another law cow heavily talked about on the internet. While originally known for his Call of Duty gameplay, has spiraled down to being a total drunk, from a fun gamer to someone drunk driving and saying the n-word. Yeah, I really wasn't kidding there. Just an RPG would have never done that, Jesus. Which can be both fitting for the podcast, but can also be a detriment. We're talking about a person who was investigated by Chris Hansen. Blade has tons of allegations of assault. So if some random fucking ugly whore bitch gets groped, she gets groped. Accept it. You should be fucking welcome, whore. Well, some of the allegations confirmed. Now, I have heard a rumor that he is more likely to be a new host. I guess it might work if he doesn't drink on stream, but that's a very big ask. His reputation is far too damaging, which is why I believe Keemstar and Co. is a little hesitant, as they disavowed him in the past for this very behavior. 
But I think people need more time to forgive Blade. Blade, I was not familiar with you until today. And I do think you're scum of the earth. And that's coming from me, and I'm pretty scummy. I don't know if you're doing charity work out there. I don't know if you're out there, like, donating, like, working in the homeless shelter. But you would have to do a lot of that to make up for the stuff that's in those videos. So what do you think? Do you singly use a blade to redeem himself? I guess it's possible he does a sub shaker, but he might have to do the gritty, too. I do other these weird countdowns and other lol cows. While some are quirky and innocent, while others will make you say, Oh my science, these people will never see heaven. Have a nice day, and I hope to see you soon.